Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, July 29th. Welcome new visitors to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Hit that subscribe button. I will keep you locked and loaded with actionable content. So uh, let's dive right into it. Don't forget to run your video player at 1.25x. You will not miss a thing. <clears throat> let's look at futures real quick. Uh, large caps up two tenths. Uh, NASDAQ flat. Small caps up 0.85%. A lot of activity in small caps the last day or so. Oil up six tenths. Copper up 1%. Over in uh, the macro world, we've got GDP this morning, jobless claims, pending home sales. We've got the Robinhood IPO that a lot of people will be interested in. Uh, we've got a couple steel names. Uh, one, uh, uh, Mysator, uh, 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 symbol MT, not sure how you pronounce that. That's in the morning. We've got U.S. Steel after the bell, and then we've got uh, the big boys. We got Amazon, Pinterest, Twilio, and Skyworks uh, after the bell. And uh, just to uh, remind people, or just to let you know, uh, a lot of us got in St. Joe, uh, symbol J-O-E, just the other day. They had earnings last night, which surprised me. I think it was on my board for August 5th. Anyhow, they had a nice beat. I've seen prices, uh, because there's not a lot of liquidity in that name, so it's kind of hard to judge, you know, after hours. We'll have to see how it settles out. But um, up between $1 and $3, so that'd be a nice pop on a $44 stock. So um, that uh, looks like we lucked out there. So I will show you the chart and kind of see where we're at. Uh, but before we get started today, I want to share a little wisdom with you from uh, Jesse Livermore. And I'm going to read a passage from page 158. I think I've told you that it has been my experience that whenever a stock crosses 100, 200, or 300 for the first time, it nearly always keeps going up for 30 to 50 points, and after 300, faster than 100 or 200. One of my first big coups was in Anaconda, which I bought when it crossed 200 and sold it a day later at 260. My practice of buying a stock just after it crossed par dated back to my days in the bucket shops. It's just an old trading principle that usually works. So, that's the idea that once a stock crosses 100 or any round number after that, that it tends to keep going. And it just so happens that I've got an example here that we can all work on in the days ahead, and that's AMD. Uh, we had this consolidation. We had a rocket out. We had a back touch. And then we've had a rocket forward. And, and I want to tell you guys, I really... Really appreciate all the well-wishers after my mini meltdown two days ago when my trading psychology got blown out when I had four losers in 20 minutes that kind of sidetracked me, uh, not yesterday, the day before. Uh, that happens in trading. But uh, one thing I know for sure, when you catch a candle like this, which is 8%, it will fix your psychology in a hurry. Now, I didn't get all that, but I got enough of it to do, do a lot of repair on, uh, on that trading psychology. But here's the point, not to talk about me and my trading, but to let's look at the opportunity. We had a high back here at 98.50. We are right at that point right here, right now. What I've done is laid on the Fibonacci extensions to this move. And these are the targets. 0.786 is 102. A full extension is 107. A 1.12 1 extension is 113. And a 16, excuse me, a 1618 extension is 121. So, 
even if you've never traded AMD, what you can do right now is keep in the back of your mind or make a note about Jesse Livermore's uh, axiom that if you take out par, if you take out 100, you can almost count on an extended move. Now, I think in this case, you want to alarm the prior all-time high at 98.50. I would not be surprised if after this big move that there's a period of consolidation and then you get a breakout. Uh, or if the whole market wobbles, it just fails here and then it's a more or less a double top. So why I'm bringing this to your attention is uh, one, the, you know, the opportunity that it's getting close in a breakout, but also to kind of put Jesse Livermore's axiom to the test. So I would, I would be alarming 98.50 because if it pops 98.50, I mean, it's already there. It's at a hundred. So you could get long against that 98.50 and put a stop below. Earnings are already out. That was the the catalyst, it, it, it went down first and then they bought it up the whole day. You know, Powell notwithstanding, that, that only slowed it down for 20 minutes. So there's some strong buying impulse behind this name. So set your mark. If we get a breakout, we'll see how far it takes us. I can tell you that there's, there's been a lot of, uh, I think I even told you, a lot of order flow out in the 115s, you know, out in time, September, January, October, August. Um, that's all a matter of personal preference on how you want to set it up. All I'm saying is this thing looks primed to break out with a lot of energy across uh, 100. So uh, let's put that uh, front and center on our watch list. CNN fear gauge, 25. I mean, I'm thinking in my head, there may be some downside, but I can't see all these people winning. I think when things get like this fearful, they've got to be pushed over into the bullish boat before they pull the rug. Um, uh, we may get some turbulence, we may get some chop, but... I don't see, I don't see just from a sentiment standpoint, the market usually makes these people lose, uh, not that, you know, not win. So I think these guys got to get pushed over to the bullish side of the boat. Uh, US dollar continues to slide. That's going to be supportive of uh, uh, materials and commodities. And we've seen that actually. Um, if you remember, we had alarmed XLB, the materials ETF. We got a breakout on that yesterday. We've got a breakout in copper. We've got steel moving. We've got oil moving. So the materials sector is starting to pick up on something. And that's really been the first one to trigger. So let's keep that in mind. And note that the, uh, the dollar closed on the lows. And so we're, we're coming into the 200 EMA and that's going to be a big, big level. Yesterday, despite Powell, whatever, the 10-year yields ticked up. A very important level is going to be this 1.3%. We're currently below in this downtrend channel. It could come up here and then roll over again. It could, um, you know, it could break out, which would be very positive for cyclicals. So we got to keep uh, ten-year Treasury yields in uh, in the crosshairs, and don't forget, there's that seven-year bond auction at one o'clock today. Um, that has the potential to really move the needle, depending on which what you know which way. You don't know, but it's been an important uh, auction in the past. And here's TLT still hovering above our uh, trend line. We had set a break below on TLT would be a confirming factor on uh, a rotation 
into cyclicals. So we're still watching that. And, but we're starting to get signs on price that there's been some, uh, some uh, movement into cyclicals. Our, our, one of our breadth indicators, the percent above the 50-day moving average are just stuck here in the low 40s. And um, a, a positive sign that cyclicals are getting more involved is to see this go up. Why? Because there's a lot more, you know, little stocks, reopening stocks, hotel stocks, travel stocks, all that stuff that are going to be, you know, that have been beat down that are going to start coming back up if we get that cyclical move. The oscillators haven't done anything. We're right here in the middle of the range, minus eight, really not a directional tell. Uh, NASDAQ, we did get a, a bump yesterday but still in the middle of the range, not a lot to talk about. Equal weight SPY, we are right at the top of the box. I mean, we can't get any closer. We're 151.96. 152 would be our breakout. And then our if we get that breakout, get back above trend, we would be targeting 158 on the equal weight index. Moving on to SPY. Uh, going through this quickly, we've we've kind of beat these charts to death. But you know, as active traders, you've got to you've got to stay in tune with the levels uh, each and every day to you know know where you're at. And so, early yesterday, we made a run towards this gap towards 440, and uh, we took a peek inside, but then closed down below. I think today. Uh, I think staying long north of 438 is the ticket. Uh, we want to get above 440. Why? That would get us above the uptrend channel. That would get us into this gap that would lead us to believe that we're going up to 441. And then hopefully get a high level bull cross here in momentum and then keep RSI above 50. You get below 438, I think you're coming into 436. Back test this low, back test the midpoint of the channel, come back into lateral support right here at 436, 435, 75, right in that area. And then that would set up a bigger test at the midpoint of the channel because like we've, like we've talked about, uh, below, the, below the midpoint of the channel, if you get down in here, I would assume price would keep on going and, uh, you know, come come into this uh, 432 for a check at the bottom of the channel. 30-minute uh, chart, you can see it uh, quite clearly here. We're right at 439. We've got a gap above. We've got a micro gap way down here. I don't even... This may have been good enough to call filled. You know, I think this is only 25 cents wide, something like that. Not a lot. But you fall below 439, then you're looking at 438, then you're looking at 436. Uh, so keep those downside targets uh, and support levels in focus. And then on the upside, if you can take out 440, then you're probably going to get a gap filled to 441 and uh, hopefully a breakout. Uh, Qs were kind of muted yesterday. We've had, you know, we had all the big guys report. We, Apple, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Google, AMD. Um, we just, we just kind of treaded water most of the day. And I don't even think I've changed the chart. I think your pivot point is here at 35, uh, excuse me, uh, 365.50 and above. I'd be leaning long. You get a breakout above 367. That opens up 368.75. If it rolls over, it's probably going to come back here and test this uh, prior low at uh, 361. Uh, here's the 30 minute chart. It was pretty interesting yesterday in the trading room. Of course, 
most of us in there are not watching 30 minute charts. We're watching the five minute chart, but I always keep these uh, longer time frames in there because they give us good reference levels. And if you recall the opening bar or the opening few bars on the cues were all red and we got this whoosh bar down to 363.50. And if you look on the five minute chart, <clears throat> you'll see three or four bars where the, the selling stopped on a dime. And I said, hey, you know, five minute base at support, you know, great entry. Uh, and then that was, that turned out to be easy money because it just went right back up. And so a lot of guys made uh, a good amount of money on that. Doesn't always work like that. Sometimes, you know, it hesitates and then it breaks lower. That's what stops are for. But anyways, that was a, that was a great trade. And so today I've got a little downtrend line here. What the bulls want to see is a higher high. We want to get a breakout here and a break above 367 to take out this high. If it just, you know, if we lose 365.5 and then come down here, we'll have a series of lower highs, which is not going to be great. We want to, uh, we want to uh, obviously break this downtrend line and then go back up. But I think 365.50 will be the key. This was this was this was another chart that went a long way uh, to rebuilding my confidence, rebuilding my PNL. Um, I had been watching this very closely. Uh, we opened right here at 220, right at the pivot point that we uh, that we had said. I actually. Uh, had tried along right out of the open because it looked like it looked like spy and QQQ were going down and uh, IWM was going up and that's been kind of like the characteristic lately if if the cues are weak then the cyclicals will be strong so I took along and got quickly stopped out and what happened was price came down and filled the opening gap. You'll recall yesterday there was a gap open. So there was an open gap below and I've got it pointed out here and price came right back in to 218 and actually undercut it a little bit. And then on the uh, on the five minute chart, I bought the recapture of 218. And so I got long uh, 218 with a stop below and then got then got a big ripping move from the bottom of the range at 218 all the way to the top of the range at 222. Now that was a nasty close. You'll see this big wick here where it came up and touched um, and then brought it way back. But uh, futures this morning are right back up to the top. So uh, something's going on in IWM and I want you to be ready. And here's what I want you to be ready for. Notice the 50 EMA. That's gold. Notice our big midpoint at 222.50. There's a little 50 cent. Let's see what it's at. Let's see where this is at. Yeah, 50 cents. The 50 EMA is at 223, and I've got a, a resistance level at 222.50. You break above that, I think we've got some good running room, and I would like to think the running room would take us. I want to show you that chart. Oh, I'm going to have to find it here. Hold on. Here it is. Here's our, our, our consolidation. Here's where we're at right now. 
you can see the cluster of EMAs where price is trying to take out the green at um, 223 but if you can break above 223 and get all the EMAs below price and break above the midpoint of the consolidation range I think you got a real 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 good chance of finding the top of the box at 232 so if you're a daily trader or you want to get a position out in time for IWM and cyclicals I think you key off of this uh, 222.50 and if you want uh, just wait for you know give up that 50 cents and get price above the 50 at 223 and then what you could do is say uh, I got ten dollars of upside I've got the 50 below at 223 I've got a, a big level of support at 222.50 and then I can put my stop at say 222.25 or even 222 and say okay I'm, I've got a dollar of risk and I got nine or ten dollars of upside that's a great 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 risk reward trade and see if we can get a push back up to the box top of the box and then if all the stars align and and people back out of tech because rates start rising then there may be a flood into into the cyclical trade so uh, I think that's the highest my highest level of interest on the indexes today and here you can see it on the 30 minute chart all these rejections along this line this was the rejection, the final nasty rejection candle at the day. Getting a break above this level here, I think it's going to be huge. You can see the, 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 the resistance levels above. But there's been a lot of energy being built here. And you get a breakout, I think you're good for at least... 218 to 2. I think you're good for at least $4.00. I mean, just as a starter to get going, so I really like that trade. Uh, Facebook got face planted after hours last night. So we've got a big gap below. I think it's set to open here about 360. And you've got a gap from before. This is on the snap earnings. So we got gaps all over the place here. So there may be some fertile trades in Facebook depending on if they decide to rip it or bury it because we've got these big gaps either way. So you can use those uh, gap levels as your toggle points. Uh, so that's a, that's a very interesting setup there in Facebook. Uh, Apple was soggy yesterday. Uh, there was uh, actually uh, back in the trading room, uh, a lot of guys actually caught this low down here, and I had failed to um, put it in there. But you can see that there was a little gap uh, formed right here that came across and was filled on this needle bar. Uh, several of the guys hit that, and they got a nice uh, trade back up to 147. It died and then did nothing the rest of the day, but that was a good... A good uh, you know hour long hour and a half long trade where where they did well getting in on that entry now yesterday I I hypothesized that this might be a double top I have put that measured move in there the first part is down to the bottom the structure gets triggered on a break of this level 141.50 if you break that level, I have it coming down in here to 133. That's not a project prediction. That's just a measured move. I think the key today is holding 144. If you can hold 144 and get it going north and take out this 147, I think you can make a run towards 150. Uh, what you may also see 
it's just a little you know a drift lower into this 141 it just depends on you people are digesting you know the earnings they're digesting powell they're digesting interest rates so a lot of lot of stuff going on this may be just a little period of resting for for some of the fang names after their big run up uh tesla didn't do anything i haven't even changed the chart you're right here at the midpoint between 665 and 625 so in my mind you either got to break the you know come down to the low or come up to the high so you could have an objective entry place um, but that's just me microsoft here was another great example that if you're an active trader and you had it on your matrix you had a great opportunity to make uh, a, a goodly amount of money why we had talked about they had opened it up it was going to open right at 290 at resistance which left this big gap below well they took it right there and they cratered it to come down and give you a touch at this gap where it was the 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 day before and uh, you had more than a couple minutes there to buy that if you wanted to and then you got to move right back up to the top so that was uh, that was uh, that was six dollars in a matter of a half an hour and that that would have been a great trade I, I didn't catch it I saw it saw it and watched it for some reason but um, that was that was a great trade and then they backed it off so today uh, 285 or excuse me, 286.50 looks like your pivot point above. Look for 290 below. Probably come back in here and test the top of this gap. But if the top of that gap fails, then you're going to come back in here to 281.50 and probably even 280. So watch how they treat Microsoft today. Amazon didn't do anything. Earnings after the bell. I think your pivot here is still 36. 35 and then we'll see if there is a uh, you know any kind of run up into earnings or if it just treads water um, and then see what kind of after hours reaction we get on Amazon Google held in there I mean I think this is just flag action it's uh, digesting that big move yes we came into the gap but it's not like a wholesale fade I think that's normal to find find a level. Now you may want to say, okay, I don't want to see it go below 2720 or 2715 down here. But uh, I mean, you gotta if you're long, you need to set a stop somewhere. But I think this is just flagging action, and as long as the market stays constructive, I don't expect this to you know come all the way back but if you get a you know if you get a break of the low you can always give it an it's an objective shot to try that uh short uh netflix didn't do anything uh it's still under this 522.50 i think if you get a break out there you can look for uh 532.50 i think all these ten dollar uh levels above will still be uh resistance one of the things that i'm looking at real close is this risk on asset class of semiconductors i mean guys i mean this is how you make money i mean seriously came right back down with a needle touch of the bottom of our range at 247 and so you got ten dollar move in two days i mean that's that's how you make money uh, i was asleep at the wheel i hope you weren't but that was a great entry but now my focus is on 258, uh, and we've we've beat that number to death. <clears throat> Here's our big range. We're right back up to the top. Here's all the heartbreak and the misery with the fake breakouts. Well, we're right back up there again. So if we can break out above 258, I think you got to take it long. If you wanted to hold off for one last. You know they're going to fill the gap and fail that's fine 
but I think you get above 258, uh, the odds on favorite is at least to get to 262 and test these other highs. Uh, and then, you know, above 262, then you're looking for much higher prices. So I am uh, focused on um, SMH. And of course, I've got a, uh, I've got a horse in the race with AMD. So it was a shame that I closed out that Texas Instruments. I mean, you get stopped out and then it reverses, but I still think that's a good trade and I, th I still think it is going to fill the gap. I don't have a chart of it here, but uh, you may want to take a look at Texas Instruments. And then uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, I took a small position in Vale. It's an iron ore miner in Brazil. <clears throat> uh, the other iron ore miners are BHP and Rio, R-I-O. Uh, threatening to break out here above 23. So I got some 23 calls in August just to say I was in it. Uh, they're not expensive. Um, but if we get a breakout in steel and the cyclicals get on the bandwagon. So I've got a small marker in the space. And uh, it is a bit of a front run because it hasn't broken out yet. But... Uh, the steel, stock, steel stocks have been strong, and we did get a breakout in materials yesterday. So that's my one position in, uh, in uh, volley. But like I said before, I'm sticking with the game plan. I'm not going full bore. Uh, this is just my first uh, entry. I like copper. I like steel. Those have been the two that have been really starting to work. So I want to keep my eye on those. But I would really like to see industrials and financials and some of the reopening names uh, start to behave a lot better. Uh, so let's wrap up with Joe. This is our real estate company in the panhandle of Florida, uh, Florida's largest landowner. We've got this downtrend line. We've got massive support at 42 and we've got price above all the moving averages. So we had earnings last night. We closed the day at, at 45. So just on a technical basis, if we can gap above downtrend resistance and get up in the 46s and the 47s and the 48s, then we will have cleared this resistance level and hopefully given us some room to run. And I think Joe Joe's one of those stocks where uh, it brings more people in once it starts moving. There were a lot of people in this run, but as it's taken its sweet time correcting, a lot of the interest has dissipated. Um, and so now I think if we can get a breakout here, we may get some new buyers coming back into Joe looking for the you know the a b c move and that is uh, that's of course what we're looking for too so we'll see how it goes today but it was nice to see them them uh, blow it out of the water and uh, if you want to go to their website I believe it's uh, uh, stjoe.com um, and you can read about all their developments they have their uh, financials posted and if you're into fundamental analysis and want to pick out a retirement home on, on, uh, on the, the, uh, uh, some of the prettiest beaches in the country, then go there and pick it out because they got them and uh, they seem to be selling like hotcakes. So anyhow, let's wrap it up here. Um, we're not out of the woods yet on Jay Powell. Uh, don't forget, we got Bullard in the morning. He's going to be talking. Is he going to be more hawkish? Is he going to be more dovish? You know, what's he going to do to the market? It's going to take time to settle out all these uh, uh, fat man names. So uh, there may be some treading of water the rest of the week and things kind of slow down. And then we kind of emerge next week with, uh, with more perspective and, uh, um, you know, 
clear direction is what I'm trying to say. Uh, one last thing. There's a lot of buying in the Chinese names, both institutionally and retail. You know, Baba, Baidu, Neo, JD, you know, all those names. They were very oversold. And so a bounce is not surprising. Can you catch a bottom? Sure you can. Just remember there's a lot of policy risk and risk you don't understand, risk that has nothing to do with the technicals because it's just like earnings. Uh, you may have a line of resistance there and earnings comes and it you know jumps way over it. Uh, that's what can happen, you know, on these Chinese names where, oh, you know, they're not going down anymore. So everything's solved until you get the next statement and then there's a big whoosh down. So uh, you're welcome to play those. Just remember there, your risk is policy risk. It doesn't have a whole lot to do uh, with the technicals at this point, because uh, if institutions are dumping, uh, uh, probably not over yet. So, uh, just never bet your life on one particular trade or an idea. Sure. You can have a flyer on Baba and say, Hey, you know, 180 is enough. So, and then get in that and then don't worry if it goes to 160 cause it might just have your, have your, uh, trade plan put together and your risk profile put together. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell and then jump over in the show notes, uh, drop in your email address. There's a, a link to do that. Then you get all my content uh, delivered directly to you. And of course, longtime listeners, thank you so much for the support. Uh, drop a positive comment below. I really appreciate that. And uh, pass the link along to your trading circle. Maybe there's somebody out there that can benefit from the work and uh, help us grow the channel. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.